Hey everybody, I'm Kathy Hester and let's make some ice cream. Actually, today we're gonna make some sorbet. We're gonna make a sorbet with fresh cherries. If you've been able to find fresh cherries and you're not quite sure how to pit them, be sure to watch the video I put up right before this. <laughs> it's not hard and scary though, I do use a tool. And I use the OXO tool and you can um, see the link down below about that. So I'm going to use about one and a half cups of these fresh cherries to start off with. Okay, um, I've done a pear sweet and sorbet in the Ultimate Ninja Creamy Experience, but I didn't want to just pull out some pears and I had some applesauce. So I'm going to put about half a cup of applesauce in here because I want this to be a sorbet or I would add milk to it and in fact there's going to also be an ice cream recipe with cherries so you'll get to see that soon. So we're going to put about a half a cup of applesauce and we're using this to help sweeten it and help give it a little bit of body as well. And I could have just put this in the pint as well but I just want a little room for mashing because I would like to mash these together pretty well. And I'm just going to use this little avocado masher. I put links to where some of the other mashers are. And you're just going to mash them a little bit. And then what happens is you're releasing all that glorious juice and it will help us see also by looking on here, a pint is about two cups. And you don't have to mash the fruit as hard into tiny little pieces. But I do want it to incorporate. You could you just put them in as is and cover it with some juice? Absolutely. You could put pear juice in there or another kind of neutral juice if we want this to really stand out. And as we mash our fruit too, it lets us taste the mixture more. It also allows us to see if we have more room for more cherries. I suspect we're going to right now. We're about at, where is that? About one and a third, maybe closer to two thirds. So if you just throw everything in here, like the cherries and the applesauce, and then whatever liquid you're going to use, you're not really able to taste it. And I'm going to be adding some ginger and some lime. Um, Michelle is someone who has been testing for me, and I wanted to try her recipe, though she used tart cherries in a jar. And I did make that, and it was delicious, but it did not look good in a photo. So I wanted to try this with fresh cherries to see if I can get kind of that really red, glorious color going along with it. So I am, in fact, going to mash in some more cherries. And if I put these in, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead. This is about a pound of cherries, the give or take. You could totally use canned or jarred cherries for this. I would probably reserve the juice or the water, they come packed in both, until later. <laughs> and then see what we really need. So this is about two cups. I'm gonna go ahead and take some ginger and I'm gonna grate probably a teaspoon of fresh ginger in here. I'm using a larger grater because it's cool because the creamy is going to come and really creamify it or make it more like Italian ice. And I love this grater because both sides grate, so it grates as I go either way. So that's probably a good teaspoon, teaspoon and a half possibly. And we could grate some of the lime if we want to as well. So let's go ahead and do that. If you're not using fresh lime, don't worry about it. I am using 
a different kind of zester for this because I don't want to get that white underside. So this is thicker and it's really going to kind of peel that into the, the pith where it's going to be a little more bitter. And that's not really what we're looking for. Okay. And I do always do this because it's there's a lot on here. Oh, that smells glorious. I'm also going to, for right now, you could go ahead and zest the other half of this lime and keep it in the freezer until you want to use it again later. I'm going to cut half this lime and then I'm going to put the juice in here too. So about juice of half a lime. And then we're going to mix it up and we'll be able to taste it. So what if all the cherries aren't as sweet as I think they are? And if you're using frozen cherries or canned cherries, the, the sweetness really varies a lot. So it's helpful to be able to taste this mixture before. And I'm just mixing in all the parts together, the ginger and the lime, along with the mashed fresh cherries. And see how there's a bunch of pieces in there, it's okay. You don't have to get crazy with it. We just wanna get those juices out so that now I can do this. I'm gonna run my finger across it. So what I'm tasting is some tartness from the lime. I'm not getting much spice from the ginger, so I'm gonna put a little more ginger in. And this is, by tasting it and adjusting it, it's helpful. Also, most of the time your Ninja Creamy creations are not gonna be quite as sweet when they come out after they've been frozen. So if you notice that this was like, well, it's pr pretty darn close to not being sweet enough for me, you might want to add a little more applesauce. You could add a little bit of date paste, um, date syrup, maple syrup, whatever fits in with your diet. Okay, so I'm going to just add that in. It was probably another half teaspoon of fresh grated ginger. Don't have fresh grated ginger, you could totally use powdered ginger. Yeah. That's got some more zing to it and I wanted it to have a little zing. I think I'm gonna go ahead, usually I don't zest limes this way, but hey, you do what you gotta do sometimes. I should have done what I told you to do and just go ahead and zest it all. But this zester works pretty well. And I may not get every last bit of this one in, but that's okay. All right, so we've got a little more zest. I don't want to put any more lime juice in it because I don't want that kind of sour, bitter anymore in there. Just having a little bit of the lime flavor through the zest is going to work really well. That's it. Hint of spice, strong dark cherry, and it's just gonna be delicious. All right, now let's just go ahead and put it in our pint. Oh, it looks lovely. I think the color on this is gonna be beautiful. We don't wanna go above the max fill line, but we can be a little bit below it. In fact, you could even make half a pint. Let's say you had a cherry tree and you only had a few cherries. You could even make probably a third of a pint if you wanted to. Or maybe you just value your cherries. All right, so I'm gonna level it out, scrape around the sides, and it's actually about at the max fill line pretty darn close. I usually like to make sure the fruit is under the liquidy part as much as possible. Then we're going to put a lid on it and we'll label it fresh cherry, ginger, lime, sorbet with applesauce.
So that's really all there is to it. I mean, I broke it down into teeny tiny little steps. But to go over it again, you squash about a pound of cherries that you have taken the pits out of, or about just shy of two cups, maybe like one and three quarters cups, something like that. The juice is gonna come out as you squish them or mash them. Could you do this in a blender if, you're, if your wrists aren't okay with smashing things? Of course you can. Can you just layer it in? And you would probably need to make sure that you're covering it with liquid. So you might have to blend the applesauce with water or something like that. Or you could use apple juice or um, pear juice or something like that on top of the cherries as your extra sweetener and that would work really well too. So we're gonna put this in the freezer. We're gonna freeze it flat, hopefully. We'll find out <laughs> shortly. And then we'll be spinning it tomorrow. So here's our sorbet more than 24 hours later. And let's take a look. So you can see things are a little bumpier than usual because we used to have fresh cherries. So not only do we have a little bit of hump, but you can see some of the bumps around in there. We're just gonna go ahead and level that out with a tablespoon. I use this, this tablespoon is like for real. If your tablespoons are wimpy, you can use a different one, something different. You could use a little shaver or a grapefruit spoon. It's all up to you. But see, even the halves of the frozen cherries will shave off just as easy to even it up. So we'll go ahead and do that. It does not have to be perfect. Sometimes I get a little bit into my own head about that. While we have a little taste here, let's go ahead and taste it. We're tasting for sweetness. We're tasting in this one for ginger and lime which is getting a good, nice bite from the ginger and the cherries. I think this is pretty good. All right, so I'm gonna pull this back so this opens and I'm gonna drop this in. It's gonna be a little loose, that's okay. Then I'm gonna put my pine in. And if you see, it's seated up too high, so this isn't gonna close. All I have to do is give it a twist, put this on, and click it. It's pretty awesome. Then we'll just put it in here. We're gonna spin it on sorbet, so I'm gonna press the power button, press sorbet. We're just gonna put this and let this come out, and then we're gonna take a look at what we have. Ooh, this looks really nice. Now, if you wanted it a little more Italian icy, which might be a little bit more smooth, right now we've got some of those beautiful pieces of cherry in there, which I think is super awesome. See how smooth that is? And there's just a few little bits of cherries in there. If you wanted it to go where there was no cherries, you could do a respin. But I like it just the way it is. I think that's a really nice. Nice and thick, it's not gonna melt very fast. It's perfect. Now let's take a taste and see what we think. Mmm. Ginger's got a good kick to it. The lime like supports that with just a little bit of sour. The cherries add a really nice sweetness to it. And if this didn't taste sweet enough to you, you could um, 
put a little hole in there with your spoon and you could go ahead and put maybe a little bit of date syrup, maple syrup, simple syrup, whatever you wanted to do that's liquid, maybe a tablespoon, not much more. You could also turn this into a sherbet by putting non-dairy milk in. So that's always an option too. But I like it just the way it is and this color is beautiful. I had done another variation that I didn't like the color of and I had used jarred tart cherries and I wanted to get this really beautiful red color. So I hope you enjoy this as much as I do. Mm.